مشكلة في احنا كده خلاص تمام لا لا خليها باشا فول خليها فول سكرين زي ما هي بقى عادي ونشتغل عليها وحضرتك كمل معايا على التليفون والمايك شغال كده من عندي خلاص اوكي اتفضل يا باشا ايوه انا سامعك كويس تمام يا بيت اه تمام يا بيت اتفضل اي فول سكرين بس يا باشا لو سمحت واحنا كده تمام ان شاء الله A combination of military and developmental factors is the most likely cause. Hello, Mr. Mohammed. 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 Hello, Mr. Mohammed
especially before the age of two years. Infertile tibia vara is bilateral and symmetrical in approximately 60%, but physiologic bowing is almost always bilateral. The Blount's disease, the virus deformity increases progressively, but uh, physiological, it decreases with growth and resolves with growth. The adolescent is uh, split in two types. Uh, one of them is the adolescent, and usually it uh, starts at age after the age of eight, and before skeletal maturity. Uh, and we have the late onset tibia bar. The adolescent it occurs between eight and thirteen years, caused by partial closure of the epiphysis after trauma or infection. The late onset, it occurs mostly in obese children, especially black children between the ages of 8 and 13. Fewer than half of the children have bilateral involvement. The average age of onset is 11 years. However, gradually progressive genovirum uh, does occur. Most of them, they have knee pain. The difficulties we face with the uh, late adolescent blount is obesity. Most, mostly of, most of the patients are obese, and this causes difficulty with the method of fixation. In late also tibia vara also, uh, we are faced with them when they have their uh, growth plates closed. Another difficulty is that we have a multi-level deformity. We have an increased antiversion, femoral antiversion, and we have deformity of the distal femur and proximal tibia and distal tibia and torsion and leg length discrepancy in unilateral cases. Uh, the deformities of the distal femur, it can be genoverum, in late onset, uh, not genoverum, virus of the distal femur in late, uh, late onset, but in juvenile you would have a bulbous of the distal femur. The proximal tibia has procarvatum and virus. The distal, the distal tibia has a uh, bulbous. And we have internal tibia torsion and leg length discrepancy in unilateral cases. Uh, our treatment options are either conventional or non-conventional. The con conventional treatment options uh, consist of oblique metaphyseal osteotomy, chevron osteotomy, dome osteotomy, and intraphyseal osteotomy, and physial and metaphyseal osteotomy, and stately. The metaphyseal osteotomy is a genius uh, osteotomy. Uh, metaphyseal oblique osteotomy is a genius one because you can correct angulation and rotation at the same time. But it does not, it's very hard to fix, especially in obese patients. And it does not address uh, leg length discrepancy in other cases. We have the Chevron osteotomy, also, it's very hard to fix. And it does not address the rotational uh, malalignment. We have the dome osteotomy, the old one. Uh, when you do uh, this old dome osteotomy, you would go, you would make translation of the mechanical act, which is not favored. And they prefer to have the reverse dome osteotomy. We have intraphyseal osteotomy. Actually, intraphyseal osteotomy is very technically demanding, and I do not really uh, think that it has a role. We have also metaphyseal, metaphyseal and metaphyseal osteotomy. Actually, I don't know how can a obese patient like this can be served with an intraarticular fracture, and it does not address the lengthening and it does not address, address also the distant tibial bulbus and it's very hard with obese patients to fix it. Uh, state link or guided growth. Uh, most of the late onset tibia vara, it's 
very hard. Uh, there is no uh, graph plate anymore. There is no graph. So you cannot, there's no role for steeping or introducing pieces. How to manage such a case? We do a pre operative deformity assessment. This consists of a thorough clinical and functional examination and preoperative x ray and to determine the magnitude of the deformity in the plane. And we do our hinge placement for correction and determine the level of osteotomy. Uh, we have to see the joint motion and we have to clinically uh, assess the rotational deformity because rotation can either be clinically assessed or by a rotational profile CT. Uh, we do a mechanical access, both lower limbs standing uh, x-rays, and then we do uh, determine the plane and the magnitude of the deformity. We can use the Paley uh, method. And then we start hinge placement uh, with the SSR of or we can use virtual hinges using the TSF. Uh, how to determine the level of osteopathy? The best place is to put it in the apex of the angular deformity. But we do put the priority of stable fixation and simple safe osteotomy level. And we have to determine the level of intervention. We consider that more than five degrees deviation from normal at any level is an indication to uh, to stop making osteotomy at that level. Uh, we do pre-operative frame assembly to uh, mounting on the frame, and we do percutaneous osteotomy uh, or corticotomy for the distal tibia, just distal to the tibia traversity through a one centimeter incision pre-drilling. And we also make a mid-shaft osteotomy of the fibula. This is a case of a 16 years old boy suffering from uh, late onset Down's disease. That's the way he walks. You can see the widening gate, and he does experience a lot of pain in his knees. We mounted the TSF and we did gradual, gradual collection, and you can see the amount of translation needed to correct the mechanical axis. And there, and at this, after correcting of one side, the first limp, and here he was able to hop. Actually, he's very heavy weight. He is about 140 kilograms. You can see after correction of the first limb. We have the amount of translation and the straight mechanical axis. And this is during the correction of the second limb. You can see that the frame, the TSI frame, is a very strong frame. This is the post opposite x ray showing straight mechanical axis of both lower limbs. And we have here the, core, uh, the clinical picture compared to the pre optus clinical picture. This is a 17 years old boy. He had two previous operations. And he had leg length discrepancy of 7 centimeters. Here we can see there's distal tibial pelvis. This is not a late onset tibia bar. This is a juvenile tibia bar or juvenile plants. 
we did mount two frames of the lizard, one on the distal femur and one on the proximal tibia. And we corrected the uh, femoral bulbus to achieve uh, knee joint line parallel to the ground. Actually, this boy was very active after the operation and he was able to uh, hold the uh, black belt in Wushu Kung Fu after this. And that's how he walks after the operation. He's hopping on the normal limb and then hopping on the other limb. This is the post-operative x-ray, as we see a bent bone, but a straight mechanical axis. This is a 19 years old boy, suffering from late adolescent blount, severe one. Also, he's around 135 kilograms. That's what, how he walked before the operation. We did mount the TSF, and you can see the amount of translation needed to correct such a deformity. We corrected, we corrected one limb at a time. And here we can see it's almost 60% translation to achieve a normal mechanical axis. And this is the boy. to be hopping here. To make a long story short, Brown disease managed in late adolescence is a challenge. It's a multi-level deformity. Ignoring the correction at levels where the deformity deviation is five degrees or less from the normal does not seem to affect the good outcome. Simple transverse open wedge translation can restore the mechanical axis and achieve a good outcome. Overcorrecting the medial mechanical proximal TPL angle is needed to compensate for the ignored distal femoral deformity. Computer assisted surgery with DSF is more advantageous in correcting the TPL deformity because it's capable of easy gradual correction of angular and rotation deformity. Uh, annual fixators do have the advantage of a secure bone end fixation and the capability of correcting the angulation and rotation plus providing enough displacement to correct the mechanical axis. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hatem Ott, for uh, this uh, marvelous talk about blound disease. Uh, Dr. Saad, we are waiting for any questions to Dr. Hatem. No, there isn't any questions. Thanks, sir. شكرا دكتور حاتم بي ما فيش اسئله يا باشا دلوقتي معانا شكرا معلش انا اسف على التكنيكال بروبلمز بس لا شوف التكنيكال بروبلمز دي كل يوم يا فندم كل يوم معانا ما فيش مشكله خالص تكريم دكتور حاتم بي على تشريف سيادتك معانا يا فندم استاذنا الدكتور الاشهب طبعا دكتور الشيخ ربنا يخليك يا معلم الدكتور الرائع ايوه اشكر دكتور جمال على ال البرزنتيشن الممتع هي نيفر فيل تو اميز اس يعني دايما كده بي بيخلينا نتمسمر ونقعد نسمع البرزنتيشن ونفتح بقنا فعلا سعدت بالبرزنتيشنز النهارده وشكرا على ان الدعوه الكايند دي او الدعوه الكريمه بتاعتك